Welcome to Brandstorm, the podcast that talks to the people behind America's brands. I'm Dan Trzinski, president of Platypus Advertising and Design. And I'm Nancy Christopher, PR director at Platypus. Out-of-home advertising has become very creative. Here to talk about what's new is Jake Johnson, VP and national sales director at All Over Media in Minneapolis. Welcome to Brandstorm, Jake. Thank you for having me. So it's not just billboards anymore. It's all over. Indeed it is. <laughs> Tell us about your company, Jake. Yeah. Well, we're a company that's um, loaded up with a bunch of -of out-of-home media assets that are strategically used to target consumers during their daily lifestyle activities. So out-of-home media has really evolved, and it's more than just billboards these days. So give us some examples of the creative places you're putting outdoor advertising. Well, we try to hit people during their daily lifestyle activities, so gas station Um, bars, nightclubs. We even have purchased a company after we sold a private equity a couple of years ago where we put ads on the chairlifts at ski resorts. In addition to that, we've got some more traditional wallscapes, buses, uh, mobile billboards, things like that. We have a national network of, of trucks that deliver anything from fresh produce to newspapers to, you know, anything from ice to, to even office supplies. So you're the national sales director. Do you place ads for national brands in Minneapolis or do you place ads all over the country? We're all over the country. We've, our headquarters is in Minneapolis, but we also have got offices in Los Angeles, New York, Miami, Chicago, Dallas, Seattle. But we expand as far as distribution in the United States, but we also have got some um, distribution in Canada as well. And then also just expanded into France. Oh, wow. When clients are looking to do something unique or different, are they coming to you and asking you, hey, can you put ads on ice machines for us? Or are you getting the inventory and then trying to seek out clients that would fit that spot? You know, what typically happens on a lot of our programs, sometimes they have an idea of what they'd like, but a lot of times we're pretty consultative where we kind of, you know, look at the markets that they're looking to target, the audience that they're looking to hit. And then we come up with sort of a game plan or a recommendation based off of all the different items in our portfolio. A lot of times it's strategic with other media formats that they've got in a plan. So a lot of times you'll see our formats coupled with, you know, traditional billboards or maybe a, a digital campaign that they're running on, say, Facebook or, or Instagram. But we try to get very strategic with what we recommend. And a lot of times it's creative driven. When would you pitch a digital truck ad versus, say, a wallscape or a convenience store? Uh, it kind of depends on the market. I mean, I think one of the things with, with uh, our trucks, for example, many times those are utilized in markets that are maybe a little bit heavier zoned. So, for example, Washington, D.C. is one that is pretty limited with the amount of traditional outdoor that you can utilize. And so we have done a lot of the, the mobile trucks there to kind of get around some of the different beautification acts that are set up in that market. Well, and I can also tell you, I lived there. There's a lot of traffic, so people are sitting there bumper to bumper a long time. You can look at the ads. Yeah. Yeah, no, we do a lot of work there. So, you know, that market, and I think everywhere there's always kind of changing landscapes as far as, you know, zoning. Los Angeles is one I had just mentioned when we were having the conversation offline. But, you know, there's areas like Santa Monica and areas of Orange County where there's really no other out-of-home options where our media formats fit in pretty nicely. Give us your best out-of-home pitch from a standpoint of traditional advertising, radio, TV, print. What do you see the advantages of out-of-home being? Well, I think that right now everybody moves faster than what they have ever done or how they've ever been before. You know, people are always on the go and they're not stationary. And so, especially the younger generations, you've got to be able to be where they're at. With out of home being highly visual and it's very strategic, it always makes you take notice. And it's one of those things that you're always just going to be around. You know, you can't guarantee somebody's going to listen to a radio ad or turn on its TV or read a newspaper, but with out of home, you can definitely, you know, be where they're at, you know, as far as geography. What are some of the bigger challenges selling out of home? I think the number one thing is just the speed of delivery forces us to just have our turnaround times go from 30 days, which we had in the past, you know, closer to you know, a week or two weeks, which it's possible it just requires a little bit of a different, you know, approach to how you flip things. So you're seeing a lot more digital billboards to probably keep up with that. Do you see a future in that in your business from a standpoint of having digital displays at non-traditional places like that? You know, I think there's always going to be a spot for static. You know, the old saying, keep it simple, stupid, always still even applies to out of home. Right. You know, I think with conceptual placement, it's important just to see the ad. And sometimes you have a dwell time that is, you know, less than 30 seconds, but it's the importance of the placement. Right. So you want to make sure you just are able to see the ad. And so that's where that, you know, definitely reigns true. 
I always thought it was really creative when they started putting advertising, you know, in the stall in the bathroom. Right. You know, because you've got a captive audience there. What's the strategy behind that? I mean, what sort of services or products really work well there, in your opinion? It's kind of funny. One of the areas where we do a ton of business, and we always have since I've been with the company, is a lot of different, you know, government initiatives. And one of which that we always see in every state is the don't drink and drive messages. Ah. That's one of the most impactful spots to hit an audience is when they're out having some drinks. Absolutely. So give us an example of a really good campaign, something that you thought, oh, this is really a, a great use of out of home. One of the things that we've gotten bigger into the last couple of years is doing hand paint murals. And a lot of those are street level. And last year we ran a campaign with NBC for the Billboard Music Awards. And that was featuring an Ariana Grande single that was released. And they did this a couple of days prior to the awards. And one of the things that they ended up featuring in that program was a social influencer named Alicia that posed in front of the hand paint mural. And, you know, this one comes to mind because my 12 year old daughter sent me a text going, dad, how did you guys get Alicia to pose in front of your mural? <laughs> and I'm like, who's Alicia? And she's like, dad, it's one of the top social influencers you know, on the gram right now. How do you not know who Alicia is? And so that one was pretty unique in that just in her pic alone that she posted on the gram, there's 225,000 likes and over 13,000 shares and 10,000 reposts. And it was one that really kind of took, you know, made me take notice of, holy buckets, this whole industry is changing. And that's one of the things that I think we see is the future of out of home is the cross pollination with social media and social influencers impacting just the highly visual you know, out of home concepts. That's very cool. Now, yeah. did they did they plan that, or did that just happen organically? Yeah, no, they planned it. She was paid to do that, but that's one of the things that we didn't know the whole range of the plan. But you know, it's one of the things that after that happened, it started to come to mind with us. Like, how do we incorporate that into some of the other different projects that we do? Whenever you get like some of these brainstorm idea sessions with with a program. Yeah, I can see you saying, "Have you ever tried using a social influencer in that?" Yeah. <laughs> It's well, made me take notice all of, of a lot more Alicia's out there, that's for sure. Exactly. Right. So how do you determine pricing for out-of-home ads? You know, that's kind of a tough one, and it ranges a lot depending on the market and depending on the format. But many times we use comps just like real estate. You know, in Wallscapes, it's very similar. Like, what does a, a similar unit get that's in the same placement? Other way is just by, you know, the CPM and the cost per thousand, you know, like we've always done. But, you know, it kind of ranges, you know, by market and by format. But it's weird in, in like gas stations. Are you doing traffic counts? I mean, as a company that does media buying, yeah. how do you determine the value of this many gas? gas stations. I mean, do you, I, you know, how, how are you providing some type of, you know, you, you get DOT stuff on yeah. traditional outdoor, but this stuff well, is a little more wild, wild west. Yeah. We get a lot of collection of averages, you know, with buying gas stations. One of the things that we tried to do early on in the days of all over media is try to really simplify how you buy it. And so rather than selling it by the face or how many people go by each station, we just brought it down to an average cost per station. And so when you might buy a market like, let's say, Milwaukee, we right. would sell you 50 gas stations and each one would cost, you know, say $300 for a four-week flight. Okay. And so rather than making each one a different price and, and complicating it, we make it simple. Do you see anything as the next best thing in Out of Home? I think one of the most exciting things that seems to be happening is... The more you can touch it, feel it uh, with 3D printing, I think that's going to be something that's going to continue to evolve. And I think it's also going to continue to push more interaction with people wanting to interact with the actual ad itself. So like the example I gave with the hand paint mural, I think you're going to start to see similar, you know, street level tactics used like that. So it can cross over with uh, with social media. We had um, a, guest. A, a guest on recently <laughs> and it was a bike sharing program. And we were actually kind of talking about that after the show saying, wouldn't it be great to have advertising on some of these bike sharing programs around the country? Are you doing any yeah, of that? At those stations. and yes, Right, that's street right. level. Yeah. yeah. No, we don't currently offer that, but I believe there are a couple of companies out there that do that. I mean, one of the things that comes to mind is like 
out in California right now, the birds and, you know, some of the other different like scooters that you can, you can do Ubers actually coming out with a, a similar right. program, but, you know, ads on those, I mean, is a classic example of, you know, interacting with the media. I was just in Phoenix over the holidays and they had a ton of those electric scooters mm-hmm. all over the place. You know, they, they didn't have any type of advertising on them. I mean, they were just, there were different brands. I mean, I think Bird mm-hmm. was one of them, but the, the rest of them were, you know, there was white ones, there was black ones. Um, yeah. It just really stood out because it seems like every place I went, you know, every mile or two, there's another little station of scooters. Yeah, definitely. No, it's, it's, it's cool to see what kind of happens next. A company like yours, do you look for new opportunities to add to your inventory? I think what we're always trying to do is enhance what we currently have. Three years ago, we sold to Audix, which is a private equity company, and we're constantly in acquisition mode. So we're constantly looking at things that can enhance our portfolio that, you know, have some similarities and and can, you know, work in synergy with what we've got. You know, I think what's important for a company like us not to get too widespread with offering everything, but have some consistency based on market, based on format to be able to, to make things make sense for a buyer. I just like your name with all over media. I mean, it, it seems like your brand could be open to other opportunities. You know, I just thought that was, uh, you know, an interesting way to position yourself. Well, that's kind of how we grew the company in the first place. I think it's one of the things that it makes it fun. It, it, it makes, I mean, we're always open to new ideas. And a lot of times it, it's tough to say no to some things. Every year we get a new program or two that come out where we do a tactic or a, a new idea that's never been done before. You know, for example, this year, do you guys watch the show uh, Ozark by chance? Oh, love it. I don't. It's one of my favorite programs. Yeah. We, uh, we were tasked this year with doing something that was kind of involved with a theme. And so we ended up doing what I just call a wallusion. So we made it look with a clear cling, you know, in restrooms, like there was money stuffed into the wall. Uh-huh. And we just talked about Ozark like season the blue two. Cat, right. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that's not something that we're going to offer up in our portfolio, but it happened to make sense for that particular program. And so we made that come to life. Well, it certainly has to be pretty exciting for the salespeople selling everything because, you know, there's just so many ways you could go strategically. It's got to be fun. Yeah, absolutely. I think we drive our operations teams nuts, but, you know, they're some of the best <laughs> in the business. So we we try to make their lives as interesting as possible. And what's the best way to connect with you, Jake? Um, best way is email or uh, or phone. Um, uh, Jake.Johnson at allovermedia.com is my email. And then, you know, by phone, uh, 612 three two seven five two two five. So if anybody wanted to pitch you an idea also as far as saying, hey, I have all these places where you could put signs, you open to an, a conversation like that? We're always open to conversations. Oh, all right. All right. And we're going to put all that contact information in our show notes, Jake. So Fantastic. thank you so much for being with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. And if you like what you've heard, please don't forget to share, review, and subscribe to Brandstorm. This is Dan Drzinski along with Nancy Christopher at Platypus Advertising and Design, an awesome company that creates perceptions that influence choice for a variety of regional, national, and global brands on a daily basis. We hope you'll join us next week for another episode of Brandstorm. Brandstorm.